good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm Marva B, CEO and founder of Black Link Magazine, and I'm excited to be here. Thank you guys for coming live on Facebook. Um, we're also going to upload this um, interview to YouTube at the Black Link Experience. So if you happen to miss it, miss some of it, um, and want to go back and review it, you can go to YouTube later on, and it'll be at the Black Link Experience. We are a global magazine. Uh, we are the right magazine for the right purpose. Welcome, Jermaine Williams. Uh, well, thank you for the warm welcome. How are you doing, Marva B? I'm doing well. Just excited to have you. I know, you know, our schedules kind of collided. And so now here we are. And I'm just I'm just thankful that you decided to say yes to Black. Absolutely. Me. I'll take full accountability for oh, that. Oh, you yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> now, put all that weight on my back. It's all good. <laughs> I was totally on me. Uh, we missed past, but I'm glad we was able to reconnect. So it's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I'm super excited about it. I want you to, if you will, go ahead and introduce yourself to the world. Let them know who you are and what you're doing these days and what you've been doing. Absolutely. Well, um, please excuse the outside noise. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, okay, we my just name is Jermaine. over here. Just, just awesome, cool. Um, my name is Jermaine Williams, folks. How you doing? Um, I've been in the business for 25 plus years in the industry. Uh, you may recognize me from projects such as Fat Albert, Stump the Yard, Great Debaters, many other things. Uh, I started my career on the Disney Channel as a Disney kid on a um, show called The Jersey. I uh, was the token black guy on that show. Uh, <laughs> but uh, definitely definitely uh, a good series to start off with. And after almost 30 years to this day, people are still talking about the jersey. And I, I, I'm having ideas to try and reboot it and bring it back and pitch it to Disney Channel so it could be something new and a revamped version um, of the original series. Um, giving um, homage, paying homage to the lead character whose name was Nick Leiter. His real name was Michael Galliota, who played uh, the lead character, who passed away some years back. I would love to do a reboot and try to um, pay homage to him, his character and his death. Um, I think it would be great. And just kind of passing down the jersey to the next generation of kids. But outside of that, I am a, a writer, producer, uh, just finished uh, my first short film. Well, I just finished producing my first short film called Welcome um, some, a few months back. Uh, it's right now in post-production right now. Uh, and after it's done, we plan on shooting it to all the big named uh, film festivals and going through that circuit. Um, booking a lot of commercials as of right now. Uh, you may have seen me in um, Open Door commercial, Little Caesars, Game commercial, number of commercials I'm just milking right now. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I'm still doing it. Still busy, still active. Um, and yeah, I, I've just been doing a lot. I've been doing a lot, just staying busy. That's awesome. It's just always good to see our people, um, you know, thriving in, in the business that they love to do. Um, and the entertainment business is a hard business to be in. Oh, extremely. I've wanted yeah. to quit like at least two or three times. In yeah. like 20, so, about 25 years, I wanted to quit a few times, but it just keeps calling me. So, you know, you know, when when God has a calling for you, you just got to keep going with it. That's right, because he'll always make a way, um, you know, and that's why you stay relevant in this business. Like 30 years, that's a long time. You know, people come and go and you're still out here doing your thing. So kudos to you for doing that. Let's just Thank go you. Back. Yeah, you're welcome. Let's go all the way back to your childhood and where you be, where it all began. What what did you always know or have an inkling that you were going to be in this business? What was it that got you into this entertainment world? Yeah, I'd have to say no. I think I was just kind of like uh, just a high energy child uh, when I was a kid. And my older sister, shout out to Keisha Marshall, how you doing in San Diego? Um, she saw something in me at a young age. Um, and I, I always just stay glued to the to the TV. You know what I'm saying? And I was always drawn to a lot of comedic acts. Uh, Martin Lawrence, Will Smith, Eddie Murphy. Bill Cosby, I, I looked up to all these comedians and I would reenact a lot of uh, either their show scenes or their stand-up comedy routines. Um, I was a big, avid fan of uh, The Last Dragon. If y'all remember Motown, The Last Dragon, Bruce Leroy, I was a chubby Bruce Leroy. You know what I'm saying? I would always have my sister play show enough all the time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like She was always the bad guy. I, always needed to, I was always the little brother. I needed to glow. Like, like Sister, watch me glow. Watch, watch my glow. You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> but 
But yeah, uh, for me, like, you know, Lad Dragon, that was like my first superhero, uh, you know, as a kid. Yeah. And uh, Meteor Man, that was played by uh, Robert Townsend, uh, which I feel like doesn't get any flowers. I thought Meteor Man was by far one of the dopest superhero <laughs> movies ever. Uh, but yeah, um, yeah, I just, That's they saw funny. a spark in me. And my sister relayed that message to my parents. And um, I remember there was like a, a, a radio advertisement about, um, uh, I guess, a, I guess an entertainment agency that was, you know, asking kids by the thousands to come down to the Beverly Hills Hilton Hotel and um, audition to be a part of this agency. Uh, little did I know how much it was going to cost my parents. Like my parents came out of the pocket a lot for it. You know what I'm saying? So I knew I had to make this work and uh, get booked with an agency mm -hmm. to further my career. And once I found out how much money they invested in me, I knew it was something that I needed to pursue, not only in their honor, but something that I love to do. Mm -hmm. um, I pursued it and I'm still doing it. So, yeah. yeah. So uh, besides that, that first ride down to the Hilton, Beverly Hills Hilton Hotel, <laughs> After that, what what do you recall being your first moment that you were like, dang, I'm here, you know? I, I, yeah, I'm here. yeah. Um, I booked this little uh, commercial. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with, well, I'm pretty sure you are, the uh, Fox NFL Fox panel uh -huh. with Terry Bradshaw and Howie Long and Jim Brown. Um, I remember at 12 years old, I booked a little football commercial that was promoting that show for Sunday uh Sunday, month, Sunday football. Right. And um, it was a real, <laughs> it was a real simple, a real simple scene. Um, basically, it was Terry Bradshaw kind of like throwing like a box of popcorn to me and I, I catch it and I'll just do like my little football dance. <laughs> and just knowing how nice Terry Bradshaw and the crew was, how he long, um, it was just something I felt really comfortable with. You know what I'm saying? Director told me to do something. I did it. And it was just like, once they were like, Jermaine, this is like your, your one shot. This is your time to shine. I, I put, I put extras on it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, uh, I did my dance. I caught the popcorn and it, it just, I was like, yo, I could, I can continue to keep doing this. Like I'm inspired to keep doing it. So, um, you know, shout out to my parents, my grandma, uh, my mom, my mom, my dad, who just took a lot of time to out of their time and their schedule to take me to auditions because they, they, you know, they they felt positive um, and encouraged that I could do this. And, and, you know, they still encourage me to this day to never give up. So that is amazing. Yeah. It's very important in, in this business to have the right people around you and the right support around you. So kudos to your parents and your family that supported you along the way. Tell me. Um, how how do what's the difference between you shooting a, between shooting a commercial and shooting say a TV show or, or film or, or whatever? How is that different? I mean, I know it's just a commercial, but you have to give the same effort, right? In doing absolutely, it. yeah, so yeah. The effort for that. yeah, the effort for either or never changes. You know what I'm saying? Like you have to have some type of acting skill for either or. So. Uh, whenever you audition, it has to be high energy and you have to hit the point of direction that the director or casting director is asking for. So the energy and acting for both is always at a high level. Only difference for me is just the number of hours you work. So honestly, most typically for a commercial, a commercial literally shoots in one day, maybe two, depending on how crazy big the commercial is. But honestly, a regular commercial is like a regular eight to 10 hour, maybe 12 hour a day mm -hmm. compared to like a series or a uh, movie where the extension is uh, anywhere from two months to three months to four months, depending on the season or the, uh, the television show or the TV uh, movie. So, right. yeah. That's interesting. Um, talk about the nose, the nose that you get, like people that survive in this business and it wasn't because everything they went in an audition for everybody was like yep you got the part yep you booked the room yeah tell me about how you how you get through those no's because some people just are not built for, built for that and some people is just like you know it is what it is what is your take on it absolutely i think it uh it just all comes with experience and, and maturity of how long you've been in the business um i could definitely say i took no's a little harder when i was younger Okay. especially if it was something that I really, really wanted. Um, but you realize in this business, you, you get way more no's than you get yeses, period. 
I don't care what actor or what you get <laughs> way more no's than you do uh, yeses. And that's because you go out on so many auditions and you're submitted for so many auditions and you just may not have the right look or um, it just wasn't your day in the audition room. I, I don't know anybody who says they are perfect in any audition room and they have stories of, man, I could have. I could have did better in this audition room had I studied a little more, focused a little better. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I definitely I've had a few of those moments where I was just unprepared and came looking out really green. And, you know, the casting and my agent will let me know this is how you were. So, you know, um, you just got to know now I'm in a mindset of maturing and receiving so many no's that uh, a no is definitely um, a yes for the future. That's how I look at it. That's you know what I'm saying? I like that. I mean, I, ne I never look at a no as being negative. It just right. wasn't meant for me. You know what I'm saying? It was meant for me. It's definitely meant for me. And uh, I'm always striving to get those yeses. So even if it is a no, you know, I dust it off. I'm always in the mindset of on to the next. So That's crazy. I'm going to ask you one more question about, about the room. When you go into an audition room, what is it? What does it feel like? Is it, is it, the, is it the same? Like you're on the way there and you're, you, your adrenaline's pumping and you walk in there. What's, what's the, what's the mo like, or does it depend on what you're auditioning for? Is it different? Like, or is it the same feeling every time you walk through the door to audition? Well, for me, I think it depends on the project. I mean, if it's something like really major and it's somebody that I know uh, is either producing, directing or starring in it and it's somebody I really want to work with, um, I definitely got bubble guts uh, for real. Like <laughs> bubble guts, butterflies in my stomach. But I've always been able to hone and use that nervous energy uh, for good. I don't know what it is, but that nervous energy, I walk in the room and I'm ready to do my thing. The nervous energy actually excels and allows me to be more free and vulnerable when it comes to auditioning. I don't know. I, I, it's, I don't know the science of it, but it just works. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Most people, most people, yeah, most yeah, most people can't handle that pressure. Right. You know what I'm saying? But you know, you know, if you gotta allow that pressure to sometimes uh use you and you just may know, you may not know what you can bring to the table. And honestly, um, sometimes uh, the audition process is like an outer body experience. Wow. I say that because you'll do your thing. Uh -huh. And then when it cut the scene, they say, thank you. Um, well, you know, you'll be hearing from us and they let you out through, they, you know, ex excuse you out the room. You go out the room and you're like, yo, what did I just do in there? <laughs> you just yeah. really don't remember yeah. it. And I, I take it as kind of like uh, any kind of interview you have, you're excited for any kind of job that you're applying for. And, you, you know, you're in front of the boss or the manager or whatever the case may be. And you may not know everything that you said. So by the time you leave, you're kind of like, man, how did I answer that question? You know what I mean? So it's always kind of like a bit of an outer body experience, especially yeah. for the roles that you really want. And then when you get that call back, it's kind of like, I must have killed it. I must have so, said something right. <laughs> yeah, I must have yeah. did something right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, when you leave out of that room, because and I'm asking these questions for people, there's so many people that want to be in the business. When Absolutely. You, when you leave out of that room, I've talked to actors, actresses, entertainers that just say, when I leave, I'm on to the next one. Just forget it. I don't want to, I don't want to dwell on it, you know. Mm. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. If not, you know, whatever. What is you, how do you feel other than, you know, what you just explained? Like, what did I say? But, but really when you walk away in the car, rolling away, what, what are your thoughts? Well, now, for that, me, I can speak for know, myself. I can speak, I can speak for myself, but I know uh, I could probably speak for a few actors as well that, you know, a, a, an audition, you killed an audition when you kill it. Like you walk out the room and you like, yo, I did that. Like I killed that. You know what I'm saying? Um, I had that feeling when I booked Stump the Yard. Um, I don't know what it was, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I've always known how to dance. You know what I'm saying? I just didn't know how to step or whatever. Yeah. Um, but when I went into the um, the audition room there, I did my few lines that they wanted me to ask for. And then they wanted me to kind of like dance and see my dancing skills. Um, I think it was the song that inspired me. They played uh, Lose Control by Missy Elliott. And once I heard the intro, I yeah. said, oh, it's on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's on. And then I heard Fat Man Scoop voice, like, take that. Up. And man, I just, I got so hyped about oh, it. You know I what I mean? That. Yeah. Yeah. That, just, the you know what I mean? just the audition. Yeah. So, yeah. You know what I mean? So I walked out and it was a few people waiting. 
and a few of the people I knew, and they was like, "Yo, how'd it go?" I said, "Yo, I killed that. Like, I got the. I like, I just knew I had the role. You know, yeah. what I'm saying? and if I didn't get it, then it is what it is. I just know I went in there and put my best foot forward. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but yeah, like, um, even like the great debaters. That was awesome because I auditioned for the Great Debaters, I want to say three times. Um, and it was I was a nervous wreck because the second time I got the call back, Denzel was in the room and I had to read with him, which was oh, crazy Lord. nuts. How did you do that? Um, I don't know. This is a now, great thing talk yeah. to talk right. about because I was going to ask you, I don't mean to cut you off, but mm -hmm. just you saying that, you know, just yeah. experience of having to, you know, walking into those rooms. And it wasn't just Denzel that you worked with. You worked with a a few big names but, right. but just to think about Denzel sitting in the room and you walking in there having to do your thing you have to block that out tell me what it was like what did you do I mean how was it I want to know I want to well, know everything <laughs> so first off when I walked in the room I had to fan out I became a fan I was a fan first Ooh, so yeah. I walked in there and I actually had a camera in my pocket and I said before anything goes down y'all uh, this may be the last time I see this man, but Denzel, I got to get a picture with you right now. I said, this may be the last time I see you. I'm not sure if I'll book this. I want to book it. I want to see you again. But if I, just in case I don't book it, I got to get a picture right now. So everybody laughed. He got, up, he got up, stood next to me, put his arm around me and took a picture. And then from there, I went to straight actor. I was like, now it's time to do the business. You know what I'm saying? Um I killed the scenes I was supposed to kill. But what happened was, <laughs> what threw me off, Denzel wanted to just improv. What does so that So he mean? goes, I, so, improv, so improv, basically, you're not on script. Like, he's just throwing lines at you, and you just have to think of answers or a response to, from the top of your dome. So basically, he was like, okay, Mr. Hamilton Burgess, uh, where are you from? Who's your grandparents? What did your grandfather do? This and that. And I have to just literally come up with answers back to back. And none of this is a background. I don't know any background behind my character besides the lines I just read. You know what I'm saying? So well, I, going back and forth and improving back and forth with Denzel, who is a beast and very quick with it. I had to match his speed, his quit, his wit, his wittiness and all that. And I was surprised that I was able to keep up with him. So, you know even, so, so improv means that you just going to give, even though it's not on the script or whatever, you just going to, whatever answer come to your mind, you need to be. It's off the cuff. Right now. It's, 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 it's like, my it's grandma, like. It's, yeah, my grandma like works on the railroad. I'm from Louisiana. This, I mean, yep. I, basically, I basically did that. I said, my grandfather's a sharecropper. Um, he goes to church every Sunday, dedicated. He's a deacon at my church. My mother is this and that. Uh, she was born in such and such year. I am an avid lover, a spirit, God-fearing man. Um, I love to debate. I love to do this. I love to do that. I, I love fried chicken. <laughs> I like, I just, you just throw stuff at them. And all you're, all you're trying to do is, is impress and just let them know that you can prove that you can stay quick with it along with Denzel. Like Denzel, we all know he's a beast, master of his craft, one of the best to ever do it. So to be able to match, you know, his energy, I was like, whoa. Amazing. So the last callback I had, the third one, they were doing mix and matching with everybody. So they were just kind of like putting me in the room um, with Nate Parker, Jordy Smollett, Denzel, other people uh, to see how we matched up and looked with each other. And after that, Denzel walked me out, put his arm around me and said, son, how would you like to play Hamilton Burgess in this film? I said, I would love to. He goes, well, it's yours. And I said, when I tell you I'm a pass, I'm a I pass about it. <laughs> no, like he's the one that told me I had it. You yeah. know what I mean? But even that's still surreal. Like I said, I didn't get this part because my dad is the main one to be like, son, you ain't got nothing until you sign something. Right. Like you got to sign the, right, the dotted lines or something. That's what I don't care said. if it came from Denzel or not. Yeah. You have to sign something. So That's as good as that did it. feel, I still had a little doubt, like, well, maybe they might change their mind or right. maybe they'll find something better. I don't know. You know, but Denzel told me. And ever since then, once Denzel told me that I had acting chops, I said, shit, I can take over the world. I can, <laughs> I can do anything. I got validation from the man himself. That's so crazy. Yeah. Congratulations on that. You know, it's not 
people don't see those parts, like the behind the scenes, the, the part, the times when you have to go in and do the auditions and how you, even the third audition, you still got to be on your A game. People just see it's it. a process. They just it's see a process. the ending part where you made it, you got the part and you in the movie, but it's a lot to it. It's a lot to it's, it. It's, it's a process, man. And even the process before getting the set can take months. I remember I think I auditioned for Fat Albert like four yeah, or five different times. That. Let's talk about yeah, that. Yeah, I, I auditioned for Fat Albert four or five different times. Um, I was a bit too young for the original cartoon. I remember seeing it a few times when I was a kid. And, um, you know, when I went in an audition, I think I may have either looked it up or was able to find a DVD or something and to see how Mush Mouth talked. Right. And I kind of just made my own little quirky way of doing it. And they fell in love with it. So I kind of just kept the same energy every audition, every audition. And I remember this one particular callback where they wanted me to do the Pledge of Allegiance in Mushmouth. <laughs> and I just do it, do I it. killed it. <laughs> I me, basically was like, uh, <laughs> I play and believe it to the flag, but uh, but the United States of America and to the Republic, but with the stable, well, my neighbor, um, my guy, individual with liberty and double for both. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, so. how did you get connected with the fat albert uh project what was it your manager how, how yeah was my uh it's my agent uh shout out to kim gola i've been i've been with kim gola since i was 12 years old so she's wow. like family You're still with kim i'm still with kim man and uh she's like i'm, I'm super loyal to kim gola man she's been oh, like family and whenever I have any kind of doubt. She always boosts my spirits back up. Uh, wow. She does everything in her power to try to keep me and stay to stay relevant and stay working in this business. So shout out to Kim. Any project that you've seen me on, Kim got it for me. So go Kim, girl. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Oh my gosh. Um, you talk about relevancy. I'm glad that you said that because you see people and they do really well. And then they mm -hmm. just go away, right? You never hear uh, hear from them again. And you thought they were really good. Like, where are they? What does it take to stay relevant in this business? What is your, um, what is your honest it all thought? It all, it all depends, man. Uh, it's, it's a tricky, it's a tricky wow. question to ask because uh, um, I feel like it does take a lot of kissing ass sometimes. Um, a lot of self, I think self-promotion definitely works uh, with this new wave and generation of social media. You have to definitely self-promote yourself, especially if you are an actor um, and want to um, kind of just put your brand out there. You got to sell yourself. Um, but to stay relevant as far as like the higher ups go, just I believe in, in, in just keeping yourself integrity and dignity and just staying true to yourself. Love it. But also there's people who go outside of that and is willing to do whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I, hear, relevant. I hear the You story. know what I'm saying? You yeah. know, so, you know, uh, no diss to the show. I actually watched the show. This may have been my last time maybe watching the show because I don't know. But, <laughs> but P-Valley, right? Like P-Valley yes. is, oh. is, is a very provocative show. It is. And, you know, people are on that show willing to do things that most won't, yeah. you know, and you have to kind of question their integrity. Now, mind you, if they feel like they're open to doing whatever the case may be, no judgment, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But sure. the thing is, is if you care how the public views you, or how they label you, or how they're going to point fingers and talk about you. Mm -hmm. If you can literally ignore that and let all those insults bounce off you, kudos to you. Kudos. I have nothing but respect for you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, but <laughs> the criticism is rough. Yeah, because and, criticism, you know and the criticism can break people down to a point where you could literally break down into a depression and possibly even take your own life, you know, and self-affliction. And that's a sad thing because yeah. at the end of the day, that all you try to do is just make it and su successfully in the yeah. business. And because of a role that you decide to do, people ridicule you and break you down. And I think that's messed up. So because yeah, they really connect you to that character. Like they really are saying that's who you are. When really you're just doing a job. Especially in the black community, oh. I, I have to I have to say that in the black community, I feel like a lot of roles are accepted in you know a white community. Um, people look at it, they laugh at it, or 
Um, they connect to it. And they're like, oh, I applaud you for what you do. Oh. But in the black community, it's just certain things that we just can't do. And black folks will be like, yeah, let you know. You wrong for that. I yeah, don't respect you know. for doing that. You done took us back 30 years. Why did you do that? Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know why we like that, but we just like that. So yeah, I know. wish we could just celebrate each other. You know what I'm saying? And say, good job on the role you did. You killed it. What's next? You know what I'm saying? But everybody's not going to do that. And if and when you're in the entertainment business, if you, every little thing you do is going to be judged. It's going to be critiqued. It's going to be so you have to be careful. But I, I'm excited for you. What is going on with you currently outside of you said you, you told us in the beginning you got a short film and I'm excited about that. You've got to let me know, you know, how that goes. And then doing killing the commercials back to back. I know the reason that we couldn't get together. You was on a, a you got a call back and you had. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I, I got a call. I did. I think I I did a commercial the yeah. day before. Shot the, a commercial the day before last week. Um, then I had like two callbacks I had to do the same day. So I was doing my best to try and rush back to the phone. And then it, I was so focused on it. It slipped my mind to connect good. with you or even send a message. That was, that was my bad on that. But, uh, we are here. We know what you do. <laughs> and I understand yeah. the business, so I get it. So what is, what's in the future for you? Like, where are you, where do you, what is ultimate for you? Like, like you, I mean, we get these gigs, you know, along the way, but ultimately, where would you, you see yourself to where you're saying, dang, I'm almost like a Denzel, you know? Or I'm Absolutely. Like um, I want to be able, I want to be I able to, it. I want to be able to produce movies like Denzel. Um, I want to be able to produce like Oprah, Issa Rae. Yes. Um, these are powerhouses yes. in the business, you know what I'm saying? Um, and it's one of those situations where I see myself, um, be an executive producer of my own TV show one day. That's the goal. You know what I'm saying? For years, I put myself we in the actor's box. Act then. We need to make that yeah. happen. Yeah, let's make it happen. I put myself in the actor's box for so long. Yeah. And this was like, I'm just an actor. I'm like, nah, I got two realizations when things kind of slowed down for me. I'm like, I'm better than this. I'm bigger than this. Yeah. Um, there's, there's more of a calling. I'm more than just an actor. So I definitely dabbled into just teaching myself how to write. I have a writing partner. Um, I just finished uh, my first pilot script for a, a TV series that I created called Laugh Till It Hurts. Um, I have a couple more TV show ideas that I'm going to pitch hopefully in the next uh, few months or so. And I'm just trying to get some things off the ground, man. I, I just want to be able to create some awesome black content uh, that I can share with the world and, you know, either make people laugh and cry. You can be do able that to, to relate to it. <laughs> I do. I do my best. You know what I'm saying? But um, I've got some really good ideas, some really great ideas, some great content that I want to bring to the world. And um, I just, you know, for a little advice for people out there, just don't self-doubt yourself. I've, I've, I've done a lot of self-doubt, but man, it's like you got to let that fear push you over the edge and over the hump. You just never know who may gravitate to your ideas or um, to your vision. You know what I'm saying? So just keep pushing, push through all that fear and just let it let it push you and drive you and motivate you. So yeah. I always say, yeah. you know, I say the people that the successful people, the most successful people, they went to the edge and they just jumped. They That's only, it. You have to leave. Simon, listen, I'm going to yeah. Things are going to happen. It might be a roller coaster, but I'm just going to jump. I'm going. And right. yeah, I mean, and if, and if it is, yeah. a, if, it, if it is, I don't even want to call it a failure. If it just doesn't go through it, it just don't happen at that time. Learn from it. Mm -hmm. learn build from it critique, go back revamp it's, it's always like a it's like a piece of clay you can always remold it and make it better you know what i'm saying i love it anything you do for real um and as of right now you can check me out if you want to see some really good drop dramatic acting for myself i'm on a show called ratchet um that was yeah. glow yeah that was that was a uh, golden globe nominated starring sarah paulson produced by ryan murphy it's streaming on netflix right now i did five episodes of that it's a really dope time period piece um it actually is a prequel to one flew over the cuckoo's nest um the cult classic with uh, jack nicholson so check it out it's a really good show i had a great time doing it and um yeah check it out for, sure. Fight it for my black men 
right? Hey. Hey, it don't happen for <laughs> all of us and we need to more. I think we just need to hang in there and keep pushing. I believe this is a, I'm what I believe. I believe that we can accomplish anything we want to accomplish. It may not happen. It's not going to happen overnight. But the moment that you decide to quit, it could have been that next moment that was going to push yep. through. So that's why I never give up. You can't listen to the naysayers. And I'm telling you this. I'm just reiterating this to you. Don't stop. Don't quit because I I just met you how long ago? About 20 minutes ago. And 20 I minutes. love, I love who you are and I love your work. I've seen your work. Thank you. And Thank I, you. I, but but just to talk to you on a personal level, um, I just I just hope for good things. I pray that good things continue to happen for you and that you will remember where you came from so that when you do get to the Denzel status, you want to reach back and bring other young black boys and girls with you. You know what I'm saying? And be that example for them because it gets hard out here, but we got to keep pushing. So thank absolutely. You. Thank yeah. You. Um, I came from, I come from humble beginnings, man. I was born and raised in South Central Los Angeles. You know what I'm saying? And we're a rare breed because anybody that you meet in the industry, they're always from somewhere else. Yeah. So like for somebody to come here and they be like, hey, where are you from? I'm from um, L.A. I'm from yeah. South Central. And they're like, oh, that's weird. <laughs> I'm Can you like, tell well, me where, you, is where you grew up at? Uh, so my, my grandmother is right off of Crenshaw uh, in Slauson. She's right on 6th Ave between 59th and 60th. Yeah, I didn't so, know. My aunt was off of 46th and Crenshaw. So that's where I There was. you go. Oh, wow. And uh, hey, that's where our people was. And I'm proud of you. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank yeah. you so much. So well, anyway, I know you got to go. I got to get out of here. But um, I just want to, again, thank you for everything that you're doing in that in, in the entertainment business and for thank you. being who, true to who you are. I think that's our best selves when we just are who we we just be who we are and not try to be something different. And we don't compromise ourselves for anything. You, it might take us a little longer when we don't compromise, but we'll get there. So congratulations. Oh, yeah. Thank Congra you. Congratulations. Thank you so everything. much. You're welcome that you do. You uh, Tell people where they can follow you, where they can find you on all social media sites. Absolutely, y'all. Uh, um, I am on Instagram. You can follow me at realjermaine underscore Williams. Um, I'm also on the Clubhouse app all the time, just talking to my people. <laughs> you know, I'm in, the, I'm in the crazy audio rooms, the ratchet rooms. I'm in the cool, calm, and collective ratchet room. I'm in the thought-provoking, power to the people rooms. Uh, you can catch me all over the place, man. Um, but yeah, catch me. I'm more so on Instagram. Uh, if you message me, if you slide into my DM, I I promise you I'll hit you back. I just I'm just like that. You know what I'm saying? Not Hollywood at all. So yeah, just hit me up, real Jermaine underscore Williams uh, on Instagram, and uh, I think yeah, that's pretty much the only <laughs> platform I okay. use. For you. <laughs> all right, Jermaine. So we're gonna yeah, I met him. That's why we were we were like he's in here, y'all. He's in here. But anyway, um, I just want to know, we're, we'll get with you because we want to put you in the September edition. We want to get a feature story on you, give you a, a spread in the in the magazine. Oh, um, thank you. That's you awesome. Know, you know your journey and just kind of help, you know, push that. And then we also want to offer you a digital cover of the magazine that will be digitally on our website. But we'll get, we'll talk about that offline. We just want to. Oh, for sure. Okay. Get, give you your flowers while you're here and why you can smell them, right? You guys, we're going to get out of here for now, but remember, respect yourself, respect each other. God bless. God bless. Thank you for having me. You're welcome.